Is history a science? And if yes, what's the correct historical method? These are the questions this episode of Theories of History discusses. Hi there, I'm Justine, and I make videos about theories of history and historical literature. If you're as nerdy as me, or simply like my videos, feel free to press that subscribe button and the bell so we can see each other again soon. In this video I'll be discussing R.G. Collingwood's book from 1946, The Idea of History. I've put a link to the book and some recommended reading in the description below. Collingwood was a brilliant professor of metaphysical philosophy at the University of Oxford, and this book is his main contribution to the philosophy of history. But as Collingwood sadly died during the Second World War, he didn't get to finish the book himself. It was edited and published posthumously based on his lecture notes. The idea of history contains two main parts. The first, making up the bulk of the book, is a history of historiography, from Greco-Roman times to the 20th century. Imagine having a professor of philosophy drawing out the philosophical presuppositions of different periods of history for you. Well, that's exactly what you get here, and it's incredibly instructive. This is not an attempt at a neutral analysis, though. Collingwood's review of other philosophies of history can at times become a bit repetitive, because they're always compared to his own ideal philosophy of history. So what are the main elements of Collingwood's philosophy of history? Well, that's the topic of the second part of the book. This is also what has made him so well known among historians and I suspect that many of them have only read that part. Their loss. If you draw a scale with those who see history as a scientific enterprise in one end, and those who see history as interpretation of the past in the other, many will place Collingwood in the extreme of the latter group, as an important representative to the critique of positivist and scientific historiography. But this is a misunderstanding Collingwood, because his philosophy of history draws elements from both these camps. Collingwood's philosophy of history is certainly a critique of positivism, but the way he does it is by asserting that history is most definitely a science. As it is an organised body of knowledge, and a systematic research of things we do not know, it is a science like other sciences, says Collingwood. But it's a science of a special kind, because it studies events not accessible to direct observation, and it does so by inference from historical evidence. Furthermore, it has its own field of investigation, because it tries to find out the actions of human beings of the past. This quite narrow definition of history is critical to Collingwood's argument. To him, history is human history, the history of thought. Not to mean that it's the history of ideas, but that it tries to understand the inside as well as the outside of past events, to capture what human beings have thought when acting. How is this to be accomplished? In other words, what is the correct historical method? Collingwood's answer is through the interpretation of historical sources. So as we can see, his definition of history includes both the scientific aspect and the interpretational aspect, and these two aspects constitute a necessary connection, not a contradiction in his theory. And this brings us to the element of the theory most commonly associated with Collingwood, namely that history is re-enactment of the past. For how will the historian interpret the historical sources to find out what people of the past have been thinking, what the purposes have been when deciding on how to act? Well, he must rethink them in his own mind, or reenact them, so to speak. The historian must think himself into the action to discern the thought of its agent. And no further explanation of the event is needed for this is already to explain it historically. For history, the object to be discovered is not the mere event, but the thought expressed in it. To discover that thought is already to understand it. When the historian knows what happened, he already knows why it happened. 
With this approach, Collingwood manages to combine both the objective and the subjective aspects of history in a way reminiscent of Diltai and Gardamer, as he sees historical activities as experiences to be lived through in his own mind. The historical activities are objective, or known to him, only because they're also subjective, or activities of his own. Collingwood goes on to discuss a number of other interesting topics, like what he calls a priori imagination, scissors and paste historians, and historical inference. But I'll leave that for you to delve into on your own. I have to be honest though, Collingwood's book is one of my favourite when it comes to history of theory. He has that rare ability of making difficult issues both understandable and interesting. I don't necessarily agree with everything he writes, but it's all so well formulated that reading it just makes me happy. That's all about Collingwood, the idea of history. If you want to learn more about theories of history, why don't you check out some of my other videos? Thanks for watching. See you.